G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here. Age of Empires 4's new map, Hidden Valley. Today we've got an incredible matchup. An old civilization, well, kind of old, up against a new civilization. Let's introduce our players for today. In the south of the map, in the color blue, playing as the Ayubids, it is Square Square. We're just going to be calling Square to make it easier. I don't actually know what his name is, but I've, I've, I've checked him, I've looked him up. Everything that I've seen so far, it just indicates he's a big square. So that's what we're going to be going with. Uh, and look, if you're a fan of squares, make sure you leave a like on the video, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. But I'll tell you right now, I, I got a sneaky suspicion you might be a fan a little bit more so of the next guy we're about to introduce. Sporting in the north of the map in the color yellow playing as the Ottomans representing Team Gamer Legion. It is the one, it is the only, it is the Viper. Ladies and gentlemen, he is back once again, just hopping in to play some Age of Empires 4, and we thought, why the hell not? Let's check him out. Let's see what he's up to and see how the gaming, see how the gaming is coming, because I tell you what, it is an absolutely beautiful day when we get to spend some time with our lovely friend from I want to say Norway. I'm pretty sure it's Norway. I think it's Norway, but I'm pretty sure he moved to a different country. I I'd hate for it to be like Sweden or something. And he's like, no, Drongo, I'm Swedish. He's got to be Norwegian. I'm like 99% sure. Uh, anyway, he he he's a good guy. We like him, except for when he misses out sheep like that. But he's Viper. He never misses sheep. Don't you, <laughs> don't you worry about that. He knows a thing or two about catching sheep. All right, well, let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about this matchup as well. So we've got ourselves the Ottomans coming out of the gate strong here for the Viper, this civilization. Um, I'll be honest with you. There's some discussions at the top level about this civilization. Some people think it's still a little bit too strong. How do you guys feel? Is it too strong? The main complaint I'm seeing at the top level is that the production from military schools and the MIA together is just too strong, right? Like the, the issue is that you can be standing in your opponent's base and they can just be making units, even though you're idling their economy. I mean, you guys will remember the good old days of Ottoman Fast Imperial. It was only, what, a couple of months ago where we were pulling that silly strategy out. I think I was winning games with four villagers or something and still just pulling out huge armies. So I'm curious how you guys feel about the Ottoman balance. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that those bots, you guys remember the good old days when the bots would come on and they'd comment everything uh, about the Ottomans? <laughs> Drongo, back in the day of the Ottoman Empire, the weakness of the Great Bombard was overshadowed by the strength of the Gen- uh, that, That's probably what they'd say. Anyway, they, they would just rage uh, about anything to do with Ottomans. But look, these are the glory days for the Ottomans. I'm curious what you guys think. But Viper, of course, going to be agreeing with you guys as he's looked to pick this civilization. And as you guys will know, the Viper, he's all about winning. Going up against an Ayubid opponent here who is aging up. We do have the military wing reinforcement going to be coming through today for Mr. Square Square. One thing to note, the, the Ayubids, uh, when it comes to the statistics, are by far the strongest civilization. Sitting at about 57% win rate at the moment. So the Viper is going to have his work cut out for him today. Speaking of work cutting out, have a look at this. His opponent has picked up a lot of sheep on this map. Now, this map I often find there's not much sheep or not many sheep. There isn't a lot of sheep. I can't find the sheep. I don't know why. I don't know where they all are, all are hiding. But every single time I play in this map, I'm I'm happy if I get five sheep. If I get five sheep, I'm like, yeah, this is this is a good this is, this is a good day to be playing Hidden Valley. That is for sure. But Viper now going to be spotting out that opponent position. We'll have to look and see exactly what the plan is here. But remember that the reaction from our Abid player should be quite simple. All that Viper is going to do is run in here, try and deter these villagers from gathering up the gold. He can easily turn around and remember that he's got that desert raider on the way, which can, tur can turn into a ranged unit and then deal with this spearman very, very easily. So it's almost like you've got that little bit of a mismatch on the, uh, on, on the matchup here. But we've got that age up now coming through. 4 minutes 22 and immediately the Desert Raider. Still on melee, by the way. Moves out. He's now been switched over to range. And that's going to force Viper back from this position here. I think he's, he's going to realize very quickly it is not a tenable spot. He's going to be careful, though. He's going to be careful. He loses all of the deer. All of the deer. All of the sheep. So damn close to home. But look at this. He's, he's right-clicked them onto the mill. Or onto the mining camp, rather. And so, for whatever reason, the Viper was only able to steal one of them. 
when there were f six that were up for grabs there. That is very, very lucky for Square today. That is for sure. So he's going to be going in for that fast castle. The most common build order that we've seen out of these Aubid players, and definitely the dominant one at the moment, is this opening, where we go for a military wing opening, and then we move into the culture wing, look for that very quick advance age up time. And then from there, transitioning into Gulams, transitioning into our uh, camel uh, lancers, and then of course, making sure we pick up the relics. We do not want to neglect those relics as well. But Viper on the other side of the map, we'll check in with him and see how he's doing. Making a little bit of a cardinal mistake. You can see it right here first. So number one rule, for, for me at least, with the Twin Minaret Madressa is always avoid keeping it near the berries. Uh, one of the things I often do whenever I'm coaching over on Patreon, which if you'd like to check out, I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in improving. Lots of Ottoman content over there, uh, and of course every other civilization as well. Uh, if you want the Season 6 stuff though, that stuff is not available for free, so just keep that in mind. But one of the things that I often talk about is we want to avoid putting our Twin Minaret Madressa near the berry bushes because what's going to happen is you want to prioritize these berry bushes. These berry bush, they, they respawn after you've exhausted them. So ideally, we want to exhaust them as quickly as we can after they've come up. The problem is when you've got them so close to the berry bushes over here, your, your villagers are naturally going to go, oh, we're not going to bother collecting from these berry bushes. We're going to move over here onto the berry bushes. And so it's less efficient as a result. Now, of course, you do save technically on... On, by doing this because you, you don't have to build a mill on the berries. Uh, but just in the early game, we want to prioritize going for these because they are harvested 50% faster. Uh, so just a thing to keep in mind. Uh, but we do see it's going to be Anatolian Hills coming out for the Viper. Looking to stick it with a little bit of a traditional opening here. Single military school, Anatolian Hills. No, nothing crazy. Looks like we might have ourselves a blacksmith that will be shortly coming down at the back here as that second military school has now come through as well. And I'm curious to see the direction that Viper looks to go here because it's definitely a more passive opening. Only the two villages as well on stone indicating no second town center. So if anything, I'm thinking it could just be a bit of an eco opening into a castle age timing. That would make a bit of sense uh, in, in this situation. You can see he's gone for that first wheelbarrow technology. Now going to be going into horticulture. Blacksmith is coming down. Military school just pumping out the spears for the moment. But we do see he has switched it over onto the archers. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll check in with our Aubid player. The age up has now come through, but instead he's going to be going for logistics. Very interesting. So this is going to be a, quite a late age up because pretty much you'd be aging up right now as the Aubids if you did go for the uh, culture wing advancement. But going for culture wing logistics, it's an interesting... It's an interesting direction to go to. It's a little bit more expensive. You can see you're paying 350 extra food, 150 extra gold to go for that logistics, but it does grant you the three dervish upon arrival into the castle age. The one thing to note, though, is that you've got this downtime right now where you're just kind of waiting for that age up. You can't speed it up. We're still waiting another 60 seconds before that age up comes through. So it does give you time to throw down your infrastructure, but it also leaves you open to counterattack. Fortunately, though, because you've gone for that military wing, in the feudal age, it means that you've got access to the desert raider who's going to come out here, and you can see he hasn't quite switched over. Wait, it, it, it's oh, it, it, okay. It mustn't be showing it anymore. It, the way it used to work is it would show the the attack that it had at the, at the specific time, uh, but uh, on, I guess we can just see that it's got the ranged attack out right now. He's going to be careful. Wants to try and avoid those those little snipes from the spear, but you can just see how good the micro is coming out from square today. Tell you what, Viper is in cool company here. Whoa! You see that spearman just getting his hardened upgrade and trying to survive a shot there. Not going to happen, though. Anyway, slowly but steadily, the age up's coming through a little bit before nine minutes by the look of it. Not a bad little timing. And now Viper with the transition over onto gold. He'll be feeling really good about this because normally by now, this is when the camel lancers have begun, uh, begun hitting your base. This is when they've started hitting your berry, started hitting your deer, shutting down your stone, looking for your gold. And that is a huge problem. So now it means that Viper's got himself a little bit of time. Nine minutes into the game, second military school is going to come down. Oh, so sorry, second blacksmith is going to be coming down here. Viper throwing down double racks, so could be well aware of the prospect of big infantry masses. So he might be thinking about going into his own men-at-arms. Dervish now beginning to move out. We'll ride on board with Square as these Dervish come out across the map. You can see he's got them rallied out to three individual relics. The first two will be picked up without any problems. The third one might be a little bit more problematic. Now, he does have a pretty high movement speed here, 1.66, but that will go down to 1.22. He's technically outsped, outpaced by the Spears, but just wait until they get into distance. 
and you're going to see these guys getting the nice big charge off. So technically, for Square, he should be looking to drop the Relic here. He does, and he manages to run away. So that's definitely the right call. So you just want to run away, come back around in, in another 10 minutes, or loop around to the other side of the map. Go pick up something safe like this one down here and try and avoid those spears. That's your best bet until those... Uh, until your military come out and, and enforce this position. But on the other side of the map, Viper now looking for an age up. Also going to be making a big cardinal sin here. Military imp or em uh, Mehmed Imperial Armory very far away from the TC. Ideally, we'd love it right at the back there because if a single Camel Lancer came in, it would shut everything down here. But fortunately, he will manage to get away unscathed this time. 10 minutes on the age up. Maganel immediately through and still training up the spears. Not a lot of villagers on gold. Instead, going to be throwing down that additional military school. So that's a third military school now coming through for the Viper. Still being kited away by Square at this stage early on in the game. Gulam's going to be looking to join the battle as well. And there it is. The first of the Camel Lancers. Watch out for it. Over on the other side of the map, the Dervish now looking to pick up another relic. Keep in mind, he's already picked up two, brought them back to his base, just chucked them on the ground. Third one now going to be picked up, brought back to his base. You can see the Viper is attempting to defend this relic towards the north side. The reality is, looks like it will be unsuccessful as our Ayubid opponent has now been able to pick up three of the five relics. The fourth one... Shortly going to be secure, though, I suspect. Fifth one. There it is, that dervish on the south side now, able to pick that one up. There should technically be a third dervish somewhere. He may have gone down in the heat of the moment. It was the heat of the moment. I th was that South Park? I'm pretty sure there was a good episode of South Park with that song. I, I, I It definitely wasn't the... Um, oh, you know what it was? I'm thinking of Live to Win. That the best episode of South Park ever, the World of Warcraft episode. How good was that? Dude, I, I have I had a whole group of friends who saw that episode and then started playing WoW after it. Like that was a great advertisement for World of Warcraft. It's like I all I want to do is just spend all day in the basement. Just just living my best life. Mom! <laughs> oh, Cartman. Oh, that was that was that was funny. Anyway, let's let's get back into it. The Viper on that north side of the map now puts together. The five pieces of what I like to call... What, what's it called in in that... Uh, is it Magic the Gathering where you there's a card game? Or is it Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, what is it? Exodia. The five pieces of Ottoman Exodia right now. Viper is actually setting up this Exodia right re really well. I, I love this, okay? So the five pieces of the Exodia. Early Castle Age, four military schools, and the MIA. As long as you've got that online and you don't die... Everything right now is incredibly strong for the Viper because we're still very early in the game. So while the score might look even, while the village account might look even, what's important to remember is that each one of these military schools represents a significant amount of villagers here because the blacksmith immediately adjacent to it is going to reduce the amount of time it takes to build these units. On top of that, having four of them means you're getting four times the units. And you can see, look at this Viper just going for only spears at the moment. I mean, they, they talk about fans and about how we often only see them. Uh, but today, it looks like it's just going to be spears that we're only really getting to see. Speaking of fans, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but now's a good time. So for anyone who doesn't know, my son, I have a son. He's uh, 18 months old. He loves spinning things. Ever since he was young, he has loved spinning things. Toys that weren't designed for spinning, he would find a way to spin them. In fact, everything that he finds, he will just try and spin it and try and see if he can spin it in a certain way. Um, and we got him spinning toys, but the problem with getting him spinning toys is that he just becomes occupied by them. He just loves them. He just sits there all day just spinning. Like we got a, like a, a fidget spinner that sticks to stuff. Anyway, get to your point, Drongo. So when we were on holiday at my mum's place, she, she lives in a different state from me, uh, she had roof fans. And the moment we turned it on, we didn't even think about it. He just absolutely went ham. He was like screaming. He's like, fan, fan, fan. He jumping up and down, going crazy. Just loving life right there. Because he got to see, it was just, it was incredible. Anyway, that, that's your little update on, uh, on baby Drongo. He is still spinning out of control. Uh, and uh, look, at the end of the day, you just gotta you just gotta let them spin. If they if they want to spin, let them spin. You'll either become a cricketer for all you Australians out there, or an engineer, engineering, uh, I guess turbines, windmills, something. I, I suspect when he begins drawing, there's gonna be a lot of windmills that he's drawing. <laughs> it's just gonna be drawing things that spin. Oh gosh. Anyway, let's get into the defense. It's starting to happen. Square putting down the first of the springles. Naturally, one of the things you gotta remember is when you're playing against the Ottomans, there are going to be siege and so you need to try and deal with them. Unfortunately, as the Aobids, you've got the answer to that question very easily. Don't have to worry about siege workshops at all as the Aobids. You've got everything.
everything ready to go for you because of your infantry. Your infantry have got natural abilities to build springles out in the field. We can see that second one already coming out. So we should have a really easy defense here for our Ayubid player. It's going to be simple. All, all he needs to do is make two springles, take out that Manganel before the Viper can react, and then look to take out the Battering Rams after. That's going to be the key thing to note here. Make sure we keep the Springles away from the Town Center as well. If we look at Viper's pers perspective, there is... Because the Town Center is attacking the Ram, it lights up the back of the Town Center. So if the Springles come in close, you'll be able to see it. And then you'll be able to move that Mangonel back. Because that's the key. We want to try and take that Mangonel out. But now, there's the Springles making the shot. Looks like the first shot will connect. Second shot did not connect. We didn't have it quite close enough. He's managed to take out the first one. Needs to fall back. He's done all the work that he needs to do now. But Square still going to look to push the issue. He's got a lot of archers here. We'll enter into the cinematic mode as Square reckons he can take the fight. Spearman looking to tear apart that front line. Do a decent job. Crossbows on the back. Viper playing with the dream combo at the moment. Spearman crossbow, of course, infamous for how strong it is. But it looks like the counter to it, which is mass archers, will be coming out from Square today. He's looking strong. Springle's still working down the battering ram and the Viper. Looks like the attack will be shut down early on in this castle age. But keep in mind... He is building up that Exodia back home. That is the key. The Exodia is online. He's just got to wait for it to come online. And it's only a matter of time until it does. It was a relatively good fight for him on the front. And as long as those units continue to rally in towards this opponent's base, he's going to be feeling good about himself. Next, Manganel coming out off the blocks. He's got plenty more where that came from. Third blacksmith going to be coming down and Viper saying, we're going to switch it into you guessed it, it's more barracks! The Viper switching it into four more barracks. That's not a switch stronger. He's just adding in more barracks. He's he's a man with a lot of barracks. We can say that much. Farm starting to come down as well in the base. Still got deer here Viper. Viper throwing down farms even though we got deer. Is this Viper or is this T90? Have a look at these farms right now. Viper, whew, a lot of sheep there though. Springles out on the, the field, taking out the Manganel there. Viper not paying attention, unfortunately. Or maybe he was paying attention, but uh, unfortunately, was he see? I think he was sieging down the archery range. So maybe a little bit of a, an oversight there. Viper now gonna have to fall back away from it. Really nice mass of units that are building up here. And it's just a matter of time until these units overwhelm the Ayubid opponent. Now, keep in mind, the Ayubid does have a number of things that are still on the table. Number one, we've got relics. He's got five relics that continue to, to trickle in gold the rest of the game. That's a good thing, right? That, that is... It, that, things that you want, relics. Things that you don't want... Um, <laughs> I was going to say, like, a, a, a set... Yeah, anyway. Uh, you guys know what I was going to say. Like, things you don't want, herpes. <laughs> Put it on the list. There you go. Things that we do want, though. We want relics. So, look... At the, at the moment, Square is definitely on board. The, the question, though, is will this gold be enough to outweigh the Exodia over here? Because remember that the Viper's playing 1TC Ottomans, which in my book is the best way to play them. You can play a 2TC Ottomans, but it will delay your Exodia. Once the Exodia is online, it is very difficult to stop this. That's why it is the Exodia. That's why it's impossible. No Ottoman player with four military schools and an MIA has ever been defeated past the 12th minute. That's a joke. Sorry. It's a, it, it's a, it's a deadpan joke, but it, it's a, you get the point. Nice little army starting to build up here for our Ayubid player. 24 archers. He knows what he's doing. Yet to pick up plus two ranged attack, though. So keep that in mind. You do get a lot of value from that here. Uh, starting to move into crossbows as well. I'm not sure if I agree with that. I mean, you haven't really seen anything out from the Viper to really indicate that. I mean, has he spotted the Men-at-Arms? I haven't seen the Men-at-Arms yet. It's only because I checked the UI that I know about the Men-at-Arms. And there's 17 of them on the field. So maybe he's just playing it safe. I mean, archers, crossbow, they sort of go hand in hand here. And we might have ourselves a problem. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Okay, so the way I like to think about this map is a bit like a clock. The way it works is simple. You can't go through the middle. You have to go around the outside. It's a little bit like Trailer Park Girls in that regard. You have to go around the outside. You cannot go through the middle. And because of that, if one player's army is on this side and another player's army is on that side, what happens is it's a game of chicken. Who is going to pull out first? Is it going to be Square, who's saying, I'm going to kill your base faster than you can kill my base? Watch. Or is it going to be the Viper, who's on the other side and says, well, look, I could technically come back and defend this, but if I do, I'm going to have lost 10 villages or 12 villages or 14 villages already and all my military schools, and I just need to do damage to you anyway. And then it escalates, and now you've got this massive escalation building up on either side. And that's exactly what it looks like it's going to be. Square now marching into the base of the Viper. Viper, while he might have idle towns, 
town centers and idle villages. Keep in mind that his military schools, his MIA, is not idle. If his opponent can find those, he will be in trouble. That's going to be the number one focus for Square here. We'll check back in with the Viper as more battering rams continue to be thrown down. And he's gone for Genissary Company 10. Genissary's, Genissary's coming out onto the front line to help. Look at the military difference between them. The Exodia is well and truly here. Viper attempting an Exodia from the Omens. Will it actually work, though? That is going to be the question. The Cavalry is starting to pull out some decent numbers here. So far, taking out 12 workers from the Viper. Battering Rams continue to build on this south side. Meanwhile, back on the north, he's only got the one out. It looks like the Mangonel's trying to find a way through. The Crossbow's able to take it out before it gets... Never mind, it was probably the Springles. Crossbows are, are cool, but they're not that cool. Checking back in with the Viper. Looks like the push is really starting to come to shove. If I'm in Viper's position, honestly, go for Relics and then go straight for Landmarks. I feel like that's the big biggest focus. The Relics are just going to keep trickling, so you want to try and take them out. I mean, you could probably even just focus Landmarks at this point. It, it, this is almost certainly going to end with a base race. Neither of these players look intent on returning to defend their respective bases. Now, one thing that Viper's got going for him is he does have military production in the base that cannot be interrupted. You cannot interrupt these military schools unless you kill them. That is it. So even if you've got 20 idols like Viper does right now, half his economy is idle. Half, part of it just chilling out in the town center here. The rest of it just chasing. Look at this. He's got no villagers working. He's got five villagers wor that are working right now. Everybody else is moving or killing or, or chilling. One of the three. Meanwhile, back towards the other base, the Aemid player square is starting to realize things are getting a little bit serious down here. My town center is under pressure. I've only got two landmarks. One of them, 7,000 HP. The other one, 12,000. So we're working with a total of 19,000 hit points. On the other side of the map, you've got one MIA, two Twin Minaret Madressa, three TC, 17,000 hit points. And the second town center is now under pressure here as well. Twin Minaret Madressa has gone down. We've got ourselves a little bit of a base race. The Viper trying to outlast his opponent. Will it happen though? And look at this, now more spears joining the cause. He continues to rally in from that north side, a, a, a sprinkled as well. And the Viper just trying to stay alive right now. The most important thing is to defend the final landmark. He doesn't need to care about this town center. He's working towards it. Viper actually miles ahead. Have a look at this, 5,000 health compared to his opponent. It, <laughs> there has just been an absolute mass base race. Villagers jumping inside. He was trying to take the mangonel, the, mang the, the battering mang mangonel to the front line. It's massive, he hits the back. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, the Viper looks like he might just claim it, and that's going to be your game, ladies and gentlemen. The Viper able to absolutely seal the deal here and take a thrilling quick game on Hidden Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to see him back. It's great to be back, and I tell you what, I'm looking forward to more Viper games. If you are too, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe, because there's going to be plenty more.